Okay, my friends, a little physics lesson today. Did you know something weighs more when it's hot than it does when it's cool, cold? You, you would think just the opposite. You'd think something warm would rise up. Well, it does if it's a gas because it expands. It takes up more space so it rises up. But if it's a solid rock and you get this warm, it becomes heavier. And this I know for an absolute certainty a fact, and I mean it is known, very well known. And I know this because I had to have weights and measures do some instruments. They had to weigh these specific, you know, standard weights to be certain they were right. And I had to leave them there. They had to be the same temperature as the room or they wouldn't weigh correctly. One cold, they would weigh less. Hot, they would weigh more. So they had to be the same temperature, and then they could certify them as being, you know, use, usable to calibrate. And that's what I had to do, calibrate some very finely tuned things. But anyway, the point being is if this weighs a pound when it's hot, it will weigh less when it's cold. So what is it missing when it gets cold? What, is the hot, what does hot mean? Hot means there's extra electrons in here. That's all it is. You shine a light on here, it warms it up. You put it in an oven, it, it warms it up. The more electrons penetrate into it. You take it out, they go out into the atmosphere. They become ambient temperature and everybody wants to be the same temperature. Then nobody shakes and nobody moves, basically. It's sort of everybody's happy being where they are. All right. Now, this is a whole different issue. Room temperature, there's a ton of extra electrons, there's a ton of them coming and going all the time. It goes up in temperature, down in temperature. You move it through the air. All of those things are being pushed in, being sucked out or pushed in through the air. Now, when you get to absolute zero, whole different situation. What does absolute zero mean? It's, there is no colder, they say. At a certain temperature, that's, that's it. There is no going any colder. Well, why would that be? Why would you stop at that temperature? Why couldn't you get a little lower than that? Well, the reason is, temperature is extra electrons. The more extra electrons it is, the more it gets hot. The hotter it gets, eventually it combusts because there's so many extra electrons, they have to just burn. But if you take them all out to a point where you're in, I, I believe they call it the Bones-Einstein condensate, where there is nothing but matter that has no extra electrons. Totally different situation. Now, the problem is, is that the way they predict these models to interact is along the Bohr model, which is not correct. The Bohr model does not take into account that everything is a dipole. Everything is a dipole. Now, this just came out today from NASA, and this is about this new thing they're doing out in space to, to try to look at the particle nature of of energy and I don't know how they're doing this there's, there's some way that they're injecting a little bit of energy into virtually absolute zero material and then the energy tries to to move away from itself and it does watch this is the the interaction it stretches out and pushes away each other from itself and then it all starts to add in. The reason you can't see it now in any brightness is because these particles are super conductivity means I want any electron you can give me and these are all electrons. Originally they were all in that ball surrounding a black center and I can show you another experiment in space, the same thing only not, not in liquid um, well, in absolute zero, but in a vacuum chamber. A little bit different, but this is all interesting stuff. In space, you get some interesting things. But don't forget now, you see, all of that stuff is now mixed in. See, now we got a black center surrounded. Let's get back to the black center surrounded. Oops. All right, there it is now. What is around that black center? Th those are the electrons. So now you have you have 
extra electrons here. And they push the dark matter into the center and the white glowy particles surround them, which are the whiter part of the electrons. Now, that wants to spread out because superconductivity says I, every one of these wants to have a little more electrons around it. They, they don't like to be that cold. So they want a few more electrons, and this has the only source of electrons they can get. So these start pulling, and these start pulling, and then you, they, just, they just sweep into the mix, and that's what's going to happen, watch. It gets pulled, and phew, now everybody's sucking up the, the particles until there is none left. Now, let me show you another experiment in space. Now, this is from the Russians doing an experiment where they took a vacuum chamber, which means there's nothing in it whatsoever. And then they, in, this is out in space, so it's zero gravity, so nothing's trying to pull it down to the ground like here, gravity. So no gravity. So, what happened was they injected a bunch of charged particles. And the charge means that that's why you see these little glowy things. That that's a charged particle. When you shine light on a charged particle, it glows. The other part is the dark matter. It's the muon which is attached to electron neutrinos. And that went right into the center, just like the, what I showed you just a minute ago. But that was in absolute zero. This is in just the ambient temperature, apparently, of whatever that space station was. Now, when they shot it in, they came in in a stream, and then they formed this ball in the middle. They went insane. The guy from Max Planck locked himself in his office for three weeks because he couldn't believe what he saw. Nobody could believe it. Because they expected it to all come out. Everybody push, you push me, I push you, you push me. And that would create like almost like a lattice like squares this way and like this way. Everybody would be in the middle of each other saying, you stay away, you stay away, you stay away, you stay away. That's what you expect. No, this is what I expect and this is what did happen. And this is because of the dipole nature of light. Don't forget, there's about a bazillion little black balls in here and then these all white ones, want, each one of them is sort of wanting to get attracted to that black one. These want to suck up all the white ones they can. Eventually they get a nice solid coating of white around here and then it will become basically its stable part in space in a vacuum. Alright, this should put it right into perspective. These are the Higgs fields that they've always talked about. This comes right after our Venturi which is here. This is light just coming through the air, concussing with all the other particles that are in front of it. You see all those little particles that they're concussing with? That's push to shove. Now it's accelerating. Right there it is accelerating. And at the Venturi, the black particles separate from the white. And these are those black and white particles right there. Prior to them hitting the Venturi, they are fused. At the Venturi, it turns into fission. That is fission, where it breaks apart. Back here, just a, a, just a hair after the Venturi, they come back together. That's fusion. All right. These are the Higgs fields right there. All right. And those came out from here out this way. These are them, right in here, they, as they smash back into, into other matter. Here they are. Now, here they are right here. This is an enhanced version of these particles. Look at the dark center and the white glowy core around them. This is the leading tip of these of these Higgs fields. You see the Higgs fields coming forward? There's a tip on every one of these and there's a very interesting one here. That this is very unusual. This was supposed to be all red laser. These are pinched. Pinching this red turn it to turn it into blue. So you can actually crush the field down to make it go faster. Or, or display a, a, a more intense color blue. That's more intense. All right now, so we see the same things we've seen everywhere, where the black is in the center, the glowy white is around it. Only these are photons of light, and they may even be the electron only. I don't know. But 
this needs to be seen. I mean, it needs to be looked at deeply because we have obviously separated the particles. We've, we've created fission and fusion. Okay, they're finally admitting it. The Bohr model is flawed and is not correct at all. And this is just out today, uh, March, uh, March 23rd, 2022. The Bohr model is neat but imperfect depiction of atomic structure, and it's completely wrong. It works after you get to a certain point, but in subatomic range it does not work. And my electron flood theory does, and it simplifies everything to a point that it is a no more possible to be more simple. This is the new model. Bohr is no more. It's called dipole electron flood theory. Electrons do not just have a negative charge. They have an electron neutrino and a muon neutrino. Consider this the negative charge. Consider this the positive charge. This one never changes in size. It is only attractive. It is gravity. It is dark matter. It is the carrier of this brilliant burner and every single molecule and atom has its dark center this is a slice through, a, through like an egg it has a dark center with all of the white glowy around the outside I showed you that 1839 of these make a proton two of these make photons now, at 1839, when they hit head-on, they get just nothing but debris at CERN and Fermilab. We show the actual particles, just like looking at them right in front of you. All right, just, we, you have to stick around for a long time. We'll be going over and over and over all kinds of different things. But heat is nothing more than extra electrons. They say it's just because it's shaking back and forth. No, it's not. There's a ton of extra electrons in there. They can leak out, and those electrons can move into other gases and into other solids and so forth. But they are only extra electrons, not just because they're jiggling around. The hotter they get, the more they will shake around because each one of them wants to push in each other's guy's territory. So yes, they do become vibrating and violent. But the only thing that heat is, is particles. If it's an ambient temperature, everybody else is the same temperature, they're not doing anything. But if it's cold and it's a hot thing, the the hot particles would leave and go into the cold particles. If it's a cold thing in a hot region, it will absorb extra electrons until everybody's the same. Simple as that. Heat is nothing more than extra electrons. Absolute zero is absolutely zero extra electrons. That's why it's superconductive. As soon as you touch it with electrons, it sucks them right up.